Morgan Stanley's analyst Adam Jones downgraded Tesla today. And what happened to Tesla's stock? It absolutely ripped. This rally finally has room to see the next leg higher. We're going to look at some of the positioning from hedge funds and institutions, look at the overall short position in Tesla, and discuss where Tesla stock is going next. If you like my perspective, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you guys also want to stay up to date with all of the moves that I am making in my Tesla position, as well as other stocks and options we are trading, link down below in the description of this video to join the trading community. But let's not waste your time. Let's get into it. Analyst Adam Jones cut his rating on Tesla to equal weight from overweight, but insisted he was not trying to call an end to the stock's impressive rally in 2023. And he did raise his price target, which is still, my opinion, far too low. But hey, these analysts are wrong all the time and they will continue to be wrong on Tesla. But the reason why Adam Jones cut his rating for Tesla is uncertainty and skepticism around upcoming earnings and specifically the margins that Tesla might report. I find this quite interesting because Tesla has actually raised prices recently. So the margin story could look better due to that or maybe due, due to the fact that prices for cobalt lithium and other metals used to make evs has also fallen straight down the price of lithium peaked out in november of 2022 around 60 thousand we'll call it dollars here i believe it's the chi the chinese currency about sixty thousand dollars it's at $31,000. This price has fallen 50% in the past year. Cobalt prices a year ago were 72,000. Today, they are 33,000. There has been a lot of downside pressure on commodity prices due partly because inflation is falling, but secondly, because the Chinese reopening has not nearly been as aggressive as the world thought it would be so these pressures coming down should weigh heavily in a positive way on tesla's margins adam jones goes on to say quote we see tesla as an ai beneficiary and an auto company jonas said high expectations on the former has brought the stock to a fair valuation Quote, Tesla remains a must-own company in any EV portfolio. We see continued evidence that Tesla is emerging as an industrial standard bearer for one of the greatest industrial changes we've witnessed in over a century, the electric transport and renewable energy economy, Jonas wrote. Quote, this goes well beyond supercharging deals with the likes of GM and Ford and look for other potential areas of co collaboration, bat battery supply, operating systems, full self-driving, etc. to follow. This might be a big reason why Tesla stock actually did recover today. Full self-driving. Tesla has talked about potentially licensing out full self-driving in the future whether that would be a flat price whether that would be a monthly recurring subscription like service we don't know but what we know is full self-driving is around a hundred percent gross margins about 90 percent net margins to the bottom line so on a price to earnings ratio if you look out some of these potential deals to follow with full self-driving could increase tesla's profits in ways that analysts don't see as of right now. So the general consensus on Tesla could be far lower than what you should expect. And that's essentially the bet that I have been making on this channel the entire time since Tesla was at $120 per share. The stock has rallied. It's been going according to planned. 
Now, even after Adam Jones today raised his price target on Tesla from $200 per share to $250 per share, the average price target on Tesla sits at $204.33 per share with the 38 analysts that are currently covering Tesla. Tesla stock is trading at $263 per share. And it looks like we're in for another rally. So this means more hedge funds and institutions and analysts ultimately will have to raise their price targets for Tesla stock as they have just flat out been wrong. Speaking of being wrong on a stock or company, we reported this in the last video that Ford CEO basically said the Cybertruck is not going to compete with their trucks and just the reservation numbers and some of the specs of these vehicles that doesn't make any sense right it looks like the cyber truck on face value granted i'm not sitting in either one of those vehicles right now it looks like the cyber truck's gonna take the cake as far as the better vehicle compared to the ford f-150 lightning well tesla fans and tesla bulls are firing back on Twitter, referencing Steve Ballmer's infamous iPhone misjudgment. Yeah, the ex-CEO of Microsoft, Steve Ballmer, said, quote, there's no chance the iPhone is going to get any significant market share. No chance, Ballmer said in 2007 when the iPhone launched, as well as the BlackBerry CEO which said the same thing at that time. And look what has happened since. I mean, more notably for BlackBerry, that was a direct competitor that they didn't even pay any mind to. And it ended up biting them in the ass in a huge way. And I think we're going to have a similar situation for Ford as well. In fact, it's almost certain. Tesla's got six times the pre-orders than the Ford F-150 Lightning has. If that's not some kind of sign, <laughs> come on. Come on. If you have not seen that last video, definitely go ahead and check that one out. Last video that was posted, we break down exactly everything the Ford CEO said about the Cybertruck. It's delusional. Now, in regards to the Cybertruck launch, I think future fund Gary Black said it best. Quote, when a new product creates news like Cybertruck will in Q4, potential EV customers will go to the Tesla website or Tesla store and the entire brand lineup benefits. This is also what I talked about uh, in quite a few videos now that every time Tesla has released a new model, delivery numbers have grown exponentially the year after that. I think it was 85% uh, when Tesla started deliveries and unveiled the model y in 2020 during the crash of 2020 at that march 13th deliveries the next year in 2021 off to the races <laughs> that's where tesla stock really started to uh become a company that was on essentially everyone's radar i think the cyber truck is going to have a similar effect and that's going to lead to the whole entire tesla brand benefiting just based off of the Cybertruck starting to be produced. Now, Tesla today is up about 1.6%. But what is really impressive is the fact that Tesla was down a lot in the beginning of trading today. Tesla stock hit a low of $248 per share. Since that low that we've seen, the first minute of trading, Tesla stock is up 6 and a quarter percent today you recovered over four and a half percent of a drop in the beginning of the day today that is impressive but what's even more impressive is where you bounced from so 250 dollars per share is a really strong support level you briefly broke under that in the wee hours of trading this was like the beginning of pre-market and you still came back above that in pre-market. You were trading in the high 250 range, right? To 
$250, uh, like 90 cents per share for a lot of pre-market. You instantly fell to 248, rebounded within the same minute to 250, and continued going higher from there. So that's very impressive. This is a strong and resilient stock. And I'm doing that reference to what regulators and the president and Janet Yellen and Jerome Powell have said about the banking industry. Tesla is sound and resilient, quite literally. Now, what this has really done to give you room for the next leg up to reach highs of this cycle that we have seen so far is the RSI coming down. You really haven't done much. In the past couple of days, you've kind of traded sideways. Yesterday, in the beginning of the day, you hit a high of almost $277 per share. But you're still at the same price you were at three trading days ago. But what's happened to the RSI? It's come down a lot. The RSI has come down from about 90 to 74 this is the exact same thing that happened to NVIDIA. You you, you obviously seen a very aggressive rally. The RSI got really overbought. You came down, really traded sideways for a couple of days, and now the stock is moving higher. This drop in the RSI will allow Tesla to potentially run as high as 300 or 310 before the RSI gets back to where it was two days ago. That is where you get the next leg higher. Now, as I'm sure most of you guys already know, July 2nd is going to be the big catalyst for Tesla. That's going to be when we're expecting to get delivery numbers for Q2. If deliveries come in excess of 440,000, the stock's going to rip higher from there. But what's probably going to happen between now and July 2nd is some degree of shorts covering on short positions. You don't want to be super short in Tesla heading into a catalyst that could potentially cause the stock to rocket higher, such as delivery numbers for Q2. That's not an optimal position to be in. That's why Tesla usually does ramp higher into their delivery numbers. Considering the rally that Tesla has been on recently, it would not surprise me to see more short sellers and people with negative bearish bets on Tesla to start to close out those positions before July 2nd. So I think part of this rally could be the week or the week or two weeks, I guess, before July 2nd. And after July 2nd, if Tesla does indeed pull through with better than expected delivery numbers, as I expect they will. A current look at the short dollar amount in Tesla, meaning all of the dollars short in Tesla equates to $23.24 billion. These short sellers are in a world of trouble right now. A world of trouble, especially as Tesla continues to find support at 250, the stock just won't fall. And I know they're probably frustrated. And I know if you had a short position on Tesla, you're probably frustrated as well. But there's a lot of good things happening for Tesla. There's a lot of recent catalysts and upcoming catalysts and positive fundamentals long term that make shorting the stock unrealistic and that is why we've been long in this name because it's obvious where tesla is going in the future and even several things they've done recently can add trillions of dollars of value to tesla like the partnership or soon to be partnership to build a gigafactory in india lots of reasons to be bullish on that Lots of reasons to be bullish on licensing full self-driving or just, I guess, more people purchasing full self-driving as well as Tesla does continue to roll out a bigger and bigger fleet of Teslas. So I think this 23 and a quarter billion dollars that is short in Tesla will be one of the factors that drives Tesla higher over the next couple of weeks. Another factor that is currently driving Tesla stock higher that will continue to have a big effect on Tesla 
is the option activity. The option activity that we have seen in Tesla recently has been very, very bullish. And for whatever reason, it didn't want to update. But it did. 1,400 orders you have seen placed today from hedge funds and institutions worth $436 million. A positive order value of 67%. And a lot of these options are even betting that Tesla is going to continue higher into tomorrow. Look at these expirations. Lots of these calls expired tomorrow. I would say probably half of the options that you are seeing coming into Tesla today are specifically betting Tesla will go higher tomorrow. The rest of the options are betting that Tesla continues to rally. A very small percentage of these options are really betting that Tesla falls a lot from here. Some people might be hedging out some of their call positions or some of their large short positions, and that's where you get some of these close to the money put options, but nobody is really betting that Tesla falls big time from here. Speaking of someone falling from here, Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg could be the fight of a century. Yeah, Mark Zuckerberg apparently accepts Elon Musk's offer to fight in a cage. Elon Musk said on Twitter, quote, I'm up for a cage match if he is. In response to a Twitter thread mocking Zuckerberg's recent pen pendant for jujitsu, jiu which he had been posting on Instagram. Zuckerberg responds, quote, Send me location. Okay. First off, if you guys have problems with people in, in your life, don't tell them to send me the location. Okay, that is so 2015. Please don't do that. But if you're one of the richest people in the world, I guess you can afford to do that. And apparently, according to Dana White, they're serious. Maybe there is going to be a fight after all. Who knows? Not going to have much relevance to Tesla and what's going on with this rally. But for the hell of it, I figured we would mention it here in this video. Now, on a more serious note, we heard from Fed Jerome Powell yet again today as he did testify in front of the Senate Banking Committee and nothing happened here. It was a lot of the same things that we heard yesterday, which obviously did not give the markets a reaction. But you also got economic data that came out this morning. 8.30, we got the initial jobless claims for June 17th. These are important because they're more forward-looking. They're more relevant to the labor market that we are currently in. After all, it's claims from five days ago. So it's not a labor report that's one or two months behind with revisions for months and months after that. More current looking data. And the initial jobless claims came in at 264,000, the same as last week. You were expecting 271,000. So this was a good sign for the labor market. Some would say it's a bad sign for inflation, that labor conditions are not weakening even more. But in the end, as long as inflation continues to come down, the labor market can remain strong, and that would be a positive thing for the overall economy. Now, existing home sales month over month for May came in at positive 0.2% month over month. You were expecting negative 0.5%. Existing home sales came in at 4.3 million. You were expecting 4.25 million. So, uh, quite a big beat there as well. Now, the Kansas Fed Composite Index came in at negative 12. You were expecting a positive 1 reading. So a big miss there. Kansas Fed Manufacturing Index came in at negative 10. You were expecting negative 1. So that was pretty bad as well. Uh, bad signs for the economy out of the district of Kansas. The five-year tips auction came in at 1.83%. The previous auction was 1.32%, showing bond yields are going higher. That was not good. 
and that did cause a downside market reaction, but not enough to continue a downside reaction as markets have been roaring back ever since Fed Jerome Powell um, has started making his speech and the markets realized no new information came from it. Tomorrow, it's going to be a very dry day at 5.15 in the morning, you're going to get Fed Bullard that speaks and then Fed Mester at 1.40 p.m., but that is it. No economic data, nothing that's going to cause the markets to, to really move from here. Markets selling off a little bit into the close. We do have about 20 minutes left of the trading day as I am filming this video. Um, so we'll see where that goes. Tesla stock is still up. 1.2% seeing an incredible day today. Let me know where you think Tesla is going over the next couple of weeks down below in the comment section. Who would win in a fight? Mark Zuckerberg or Elon Musk? Let me know your thoughts on all of that down below in the comment section. Again, if you want to come trade with me live in real time every time I make a trade, link down below in the description of this video. And if you guys also want to get up to 100 free stocks, use my link down below in the description of this video to sign up for Weeble. It's free money if you have not already done it. I know a lot of people have signed up to Weeble already, but if you are one of them that have not, definitely sign up for Weeble using the link down below in the description. Thank you for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one.